Hi there. In this video, we're going to have a look at a vehicle's engine load and engine fuel flow rate consumption. And we're going to see how this is affected by changing the gears from park, reverse, neutral and drive with and without the air conditioning on. Now for this test, we're going to use two different vehicles and we're going to record the data and see if we can make some sort of correlation between the two. Now both vehicles will be stationary with their engines at idle and that way we eliminate any variances caused during driving, for example wind resistance, inclines and declines in the road and so forth. Now to measure this data, we're going to be using the scan gauge 2 unit, which is what you see right here, and that's connected to the vehicle's onboard diagnostic port. So that's reading information directly off the engine control module or engine control unit. And as you can see in the top left hand corner with the engine temperature, so that's 89 degrees Celsius, the engine idle below that, which is roughly about 600 RPM. In the top right hand corner, we have the fuel flow rate consumption, which is 0.34 liters per hour. And below that, we have the engine load, which is around 27%. All right, so this is the first vehicle, and it's a 2017 Mazda CX-5 running the two liter Sky Active G engine. So now the vehicle's in park, and you can see that the fuel flow rate of consumption is about 0.34 liters per hour and the engine load is around 27, 28%. So now we're gonna go into reverse. And you can see now that the fuel flow rate of consumption has gone up to about 0.49, 0.5 liters per hour, and engine load has gone up to 35%. So now we're gonna go into neutral. So you can see now that the engine fuel flow rate of consumption has gone down to about 0.33 liters per hour, and engine load is around 26%. So this is very similar to the park position. And now we're gonna go into drive. And you can see now that the fuel flow rate of consumption has gone back up to about 0.47, 0.48 liters per hour, and engine load up to about 35%, so similar to reverse. All right, so now we're gonna go back into park and do this same exercise with the air conditioning on. All right, so now I've got the air conditioning on and you can see the fuel flow rate of consumption is still hovering around the 0 0.33, 0 0.34 litres per hour and engine load is around the 26-27%. So I'm going to go into reverse and you can see now that the fuel flow rate of consumption has gone up to about 0 0.5, 0 0.48 to 0.5 litres per hour and engine load up to 35%. Now going into neutral the fuel flow rate of consumption is back down to about 0.31 litres per hour and engine load down to about 27%. And now in dry, we've got the fuel flow rate going up to about 0 0.49, 0 0.5 litres per hour and the engine load at 35%. So now we're going to go over to our second vehicle and do the exact same test and record that same data and see if we can make any correlation between the two. All right, so we're in vehicle number two now. And this vehicle is a 2019 Isuzu MUX and it's running a 3 litre Comrail diesel engine, which is the 4JJ1 engine. Now similar to the Mazda, the vehicle is in a stationary position, the engine is idling and the engine is also at its nominal temperature. So now we are in park and you can see that the engine load is roughly 16 to 17%. The fuel flow rate of consumption is hovering around the 0.72 litres per hour mark. So now we're going to go into reverse and you can see that the engine load has increased to around 29-30% and the fuel flow rate of consumption is hovering around the 1.2, 1.22 litres per hour mark. So we're going to go into neutral and you can see now the engine load has reduced again similar to park and it's down to about 16% and the fuel flow rate of consumption is down to about 0 0.65, 0 0.67 litres per hour. So we'll go into drive. So similar to reverse, engine load has gone up to about 28% and the fuel flow rate of consumption is around the 1.17 litres per hour mark. So we're going to go back into park. We'll let that settle and now we're going to put the air conditioning on. Alright, so the air conditioning is on and the engine load has increased slightly to around 18 or 19 percent and the fuel flow rate of consumption is at 0.85 litres per hour. 
So we're going to reverse. All right, so we can see that the engine load has increased, so around 33, 34%. And the fuel flow rate of consumption is hovering around the 1.51 liters per hour. We'll go into neutral now. And you can see that the engine load has reduced again, and it's hovering around the 19% and the fuel flow rate of consumption is around the 0 0.85, 0 0.88 litres per hour. So now we'll go into drive. And you can see now that the engine load has increased once again, so around 33%, and the fuel flow rate of consumption is around the 1.49 litres per hour. Now we're just going to go back into park, and we're going to see what effect the fan speed, so that is the air conditioning fan speed, has on the engine load and fuel flow rate of consumption, if any. So now we're just at our minimum and we're gonna go all the way to our maximum. So you can probably hear now that the air conditioning is on full and the engine load hasn't increased that much. So it's around the 19 or 20% mark and the fuel flow rate of consumption is around the 0.91, just under litres per hour mark. So we're just going to go back to minimum again. So that concludes the testing of both vehicles. Let's now analyse these results. So here are the test results with the results of vehicle number one on the left and vehicle number two on the right. Firstly, analysing the results in the first vehicle. With the air conditioning either off or on, the results were almost identical. Both the engine load and fuel flow rate of consumption were almost on par for each gear. Now the AC fan was on minimum or min, but the results indicate that the AC had a negligible effect on both engine load and fuel flow rate of consumption. However, as the vehicle most likely be driven when the AC is on, the key result then is when the transmission is in D or drive. Even though the engine load was the same at 35%, the fuel flow rate of consumption increased slightly by 0.01 litres per hour. Interestingly, the AC seems to have a greater effect in our second vehicle. The results show that both the engine load and the fuel flow rate of consumption increase enough to register on the scan gauge. Again, as the vehicle will most likely be driven when the AC is on, the key result is when the transmission is in drive. In drive, with the AC on, the engine load increased by 5% and the fuel flow rate of consumption increased by 0.32 litres per hour. So what does all this actually mean? If we take the claimed fuel consumption of this vehicle, which is approximately 8 litres per 100 kilometres, and say we travel 1,000 kilometres at a speed of 100 kilometres an hour, so at the end of our 10 hour journey, in theory, the total fuel consumed would be 80 litres. From these test results, if we travelled with the AC on min, the engine would have consumed an additional 3.2 litres of fuel. Now, with the AC on max, the results showed an additional increase of 0.05 litres per hour when compared with the AC on min. So using this example scenario, this would be an equivalent to an additional 3.7 litres of fuel consumed. Now what is important to note here is that the AC had a relatively minor impact in each vehicle, in both the engine load and fuel flow rate of consumption. Additionally, we use only two vehicles in this test. However, there are a number of factors which can affect these results, and they include vehicle make, age, mileage, engine type, fuel type, and even ambient conditions. The results we obtained in this video may vary significantly for other vehicles. However, I hope this has given you some better insights on the impacts of the AC on engine load, fuel flow rate of consumption, and even how gear selection can affect these results. I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.